This is the second in our series of videos about getting XBRL into Excel using Power Query. We recommend you watch our first video, Easy XBRL into Excel, before watching this. Now in our last video, we were able to get lots of lovely XBRL into Excel using a simple table over here. Now the question we have this time round is how do we take control of this Web Power Query so that we can change the inputs without having to rewrite the query every time. So let's say we want to be able to bring in a different company every time. So we need to be able to specify a different ticker each time we do that. And ideally, we'd love to be able to specify it by having it in a cell. So let's do that. Let's put it in a cell. So let's put our ticker that we used last time, MSFT from Microsoft in a cell, and we'll give it a title, rather imaginatively, we shall call it a ticker, and we will highlight those cells, and we can very easily now turn this into a table. So if we go to insert and click on table, and we tell it that we do indeed have a header, which is the title ticker, and click on OK, and Bob's your uncle, we have a table and we can rename it to something sensible so because this is where we're going to store our company we will call it the company table and there it is all done now we the fact that we now have a table suddenly everything changes because power query loves tables it thinks in tables it outputs tables it likes them as inputs um power query is just all about tables i will go on and on about this because yeah it's something that um, you have to understand about power query and so because we now have a table power query can communicate with this simple piece of information and we can use it as a dynamic variable and it's very easy to do that now. So if we just double click on this, this would enable us to edit our query and we will go into the Power Query Editor, which is a whole thing in itself. And you will see all the different stages now that it took to create our simple query. Here they all are. Let's go to, in fact, the last one. Um, and up here, you will see the Power M query language. And as you can see, it's, um, yes, on occasion, quite complicated and quite scary. If we go to the source line, it's slightly less scary because um, we will see something there that we recognize when I click on it properly. Um, and you will see the simple web request that we put in right at the start. Um, so this is familiar to us. And as you can see, um, it's held in double quotes, which means it is a text string. Now, some of this we wish to remain static, so we will keep that in a text string by putting um, our double quotes there. So we're going to keep that bit, but what we want to be able to do is to change this bit so that it's dynamic. So um, if we get rid of it and say we join our static bit using an ampersand with our new bit, and if we copy in a little bit of the Power M query language, which I uh, copied earlier, so I just need to paste it in. Um, we will see how we do this. So this is the bit that does the work, and what it needs to know is the name of the table, which, if you remember, we called company. Um, and that will connect it with the table, but we do need to tell it specifically where in the table the piece of information is. So we need to tell it it's in the first row. And because this is all kind of array stuff, and arrays always start um, at zero, we need to tell them that the first row is in fact zero. And um, we also need to specify the column. And the column is the title that we gave our column of data, which is ticker. So once we specify that, as you can see, it's got very specific nomenclature. We have to put that in uh, square brackets, and we had to put the uh, um, the row number in uh, curly brackets. Uh, and once we've got all that set up, and we click on uh, return, it will go away and do what it needs to do. And um, it's, it, nothing's changed. 
which is what we want. It means that it's bringing back the exact same query, but using our uh, variable that we put in a cell in a sheet instead. So just to absolutely confirm that, we go to change type, you will see the data. If we click, uh, basically close the editor, first thing it will do is ask if we want to save it, and of course we want to save it, we want to keep that information. And um, it's uh, now going to go away, and um, uh, it will uh, bring back the data. As you can see, it's running over here. You may have noticed that anyway, it's finished, which is even better. Um, and um, yeah, it's brought back the table and the input it is using for this is this cell over here.